Okay, so I'm back, and we're talking about genetic engineering and the future evolution, the, the role it plays. So before we talked mostly, in the previous slides, we talked mostly about um, natural selection and how species are naturally selected to vary based on where they live, based on what they've been exposed to, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're going to talk more about artificial selection, the choice to change genetic characteristics of populations through selective breeding, right? So first... Um, we can say I want the fur of a poodle but the demeanor of a Rottweiler, right? And so I'm now selecting how I'm going to breed these organisms. Make a puppy, it's great. I'm going to breed those and make a species, right? Now I now have a new variation of dog. We can also use genetic engineering to transfer genes from one species to another, which is more like our um, golden rice that we talked about from the previous chapter. So, in essence, this is how genetically modified organisms are used, right? You have um, a, plas a, a gene, you extract the DNA, you take the gene that you want. This is the section of the gene that I want. So I'm cutting my DNA. This is the section that I want. I put it into a plasmid, and a plasmid is, the, in essence, the DNA in a bacteria, right? E. coli bacteria. And one thing that we know about bacteria is that they grow really fast. They grow and they multiply quickly, and when they do that, they are um, genetically identical. So every time this E. coli, right, every time this bacteria divides, I'm going to put in the tray and let it divide, it's going to copy this trait that I want. So I can then do the same thing again, right? I can, um, okay, so <laughs> I can uh, then take the trait that I want, um, put it into another bacteria that could then infect something else, um, and infect the host DNA, and change that host DNA. There's another thing that they call where they just, you know, they shoot bullets, right? They put the DNA, they put the plasmid on these these bullets, these microscopic bullets, and shoot them in to the um, DNA with something called a gene gun. That would, in that shooting into, makes it infuse into part of that DNA. For phase three, we can join and gen grow the genetically engineered plant. So now I have this new cell, right, that I have transferred in, um, and I'm going to let that cell divide. I'm then going to put those cells down into some type of culture to let them form little plantlets, transfer them, and now I have a field of the exact same tree that I know grows really, really great. Right? So these are um, ways to use GMOs. So you can either use um, making a modified gene using bacteria um, and then transfer that into uh, a plant cell and then grow that plant. So biologists are um, learning to rebuild organisms from their cell components and to clone organisms. So cloning has led to many to high miscarriage rates, rapid aging, and organ defects. And so this is not in humans, right? It's not legal for humans yet, but they've cloned plenty of animals, dogs, cows, sheep, all types of things. Um, so these are our concerns, right? This is where evolution is going. But we recognize that it's not quite there yet. They quite they haven't fixed out all the kinks, right? So genetic engineering can help improve human condition, but results are not always predictable. We don't know where the new gene located DNA molecule, how it'll affect that organism, et cetera, et cetera. All the concerns that we talked about in the last chapter. So there's a number of controversy controversies over genetic engineering. One there are a number of privacy, ethical, legal, and environmental issues, right? This whole idea around cloning. Should it be legal to clone humans, right? We don't really know. Should it be legal for a parent to say, well, I don't want my child to have um, black eyes. I want them to have blue eyes, so I'm going to make it happen, right? Should this be regulated? Should there be laws put in place to say you can only do X, Y, Z? And finally, what are the long-term environmental consequences? So regardless of what it might do to us, long-term environmental consequences. So in the long run, what's going to happen? Are all these plants going to turn to or turn on us? Are the animals going to act crazy? We don't really know what's going to happen. And so 
because it's still a relatively new process. So there's a case study in your textbook that I encourage you to read about how do we, we being humans, become such a powerful species so quickly. Why? We lack speed, we lack strength, we lack agility, weapons, logs, right? Poor hearing and vision. This is compared to other mostly animal species. But why have we, thri we thrived? We thrived because of our whole opposable thumbs. So unlike the dog who may be stronger or the tiger that can't be stronger, they can't open a door. They can't open a cage, right? So once we close them in, they're stuck, right? Um, so we'll give that a thumbs up. One, two, three, four. Look at that. Right? And the ability to walk upright so we can see what's coming to us. We can climb, we can jump, we can run, right? So we can, the ability to walk upright is what they say is great for us. And then complex brains, we're able to problem solve. So not only, so when we do get caught behind that door, we can figure out how to get it open by putting our thumb, our brain is smart enough, and then our thumb knows to go around it and squeeze it and turn it, right? So other organisms have that ability to problem solve, but it's the combination of all these things that allow us to that have allowed us to be able to thrive. And that is the end of the notes for this chapter. We will go over genetic engineering briefly on um, Friday, but um, a little bit more on Monday. All right, till next time.